so that you, uh, you you're uh, you're doing that. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd I'd just sort of go through you know my my history of my boat, and then we can we can get into you know the specifics, and I I'll talk about you know sort of light air setup and boat handling, and run it all the way up to heavy air, and um, we'll try and you know I think the, the emphasis today is to, to to keep maybe this discussion to 45 minutes or so, and then and then try and get on the water, and then and then we can circle around and. Um, I'd like to try and debrief almost immediately before we come in, um, if, even in like get your sails down, even in like wet sailing clothes, because if, if you don't do it that way, then um, the mudslides take a toll. Uh, kind of lost the crowd last year, so uh, you know, just make it. Well, it's all current too. You know, just grab your notebook and and, um, and then throughout the night, I mean, it's fine to you know, just get. Like I said, I'm here to. And answer as many questions as I can. Could you basically go through like a step by step pack and a job? And how you go yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I, we started sailing A class a while ago in, in sort of the, the middle 90s. Um, ben, and, ben and I, and Steve and Paul, and collectively gotten to a pretty advanced boat from the plywood boat. is uh, uh, one, of, one of Pete's designs, and I ended up building it myself. Um, and uh, this is the same mast that I've been using for four or five years now. Um, and I've kept it uh, just because I'm used to it and I like it. And uh, so I, I tend to keep my mast and sell that platform. Um, and uh, yeah, it's under a little bit of repair right now. <laughs> Sailing. Oh. I have a boat from Australian High Performance Catamaran. 
resisted putting this on the boat, but uh, it, it helps in really light air when it's sloppy. Um, so I've, I've slowly added um, some systems from that basic Australian setup uh, to, I think, kind of cater to the lighter air that we usually sail. I know you um, don't know, see a lot of light air in the States. Uh, the Cunningham is a 12 to 1 inside. Simple, a simple hook and a shackle. Try and make the boat really easy and fast for you, so you don't waste a lot of time, you know, getting on the water. Lars, you said you're 12 to 1 on the inside and 2 to 1 on the uh, inside? It's 12 to 1 total. Okay. Um, and and it's, it's pretty minimal, uh, but I like, uh, and basically when I bottom out on my Cunningham, I know that something else probably needs to be changed, you know, spreaders or, or dive attention. So I use it as a gauge um, uh, for, for upwind tuning. Uh, my, my diamonds go to uh, go to a bolt, which is underneath here. I keep, keep a wrench right here, and uh, that's that's what I have to do. I, I adjust these quite a bit. Um, That's what I gauge off, basically, right? It's it's a pretty local adjustment, uh, and it also, uh, you know, we have we have tight diamonds. It it forces the top of the mass to be slightly more active. I guess. Um, it's pretty 
wound up. I think you know the the, the Glazer sails I've found are, are pretty pretty powerful in general. And um, you know, I used to sail with uh, with blend stuff or, and even the good all stuff beforehand, and it was it was so easy to go blend fast. Can you measure from the force state back? Do you know how far down the rake is on the transom? Uh, are there marks on that transom there? Yeah. One of them might have. Yeah. I don't have, I took my trapeze wires off because I need to replace them. Yeah, there's some marks here. There's one oh. mark here. Right. Yeah. that far down. That's probably my max forward. Mm -hmm. I think probably. Change for every platform mode. It does. But I yeah, it's have pretty different. <laughs> <laughs> change the pins. Right. Um, I've got a setting. Um, and this, this is something I don't really change a lot. Right. Um, how loose how loose in the lighter stuff is loose. Wait. This, what, this what's is your the, deflection? I don't know. Okay. That that was yesterday. Right. So today um, you know mark the marks are this far apart. So you might be loosening uh, loosening an inch. Okay. You're just one pin hole on the SPI. <coughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I've narrowed down to. You, you picked the one, your general setting, not the heavier setting, but the general setting, basically, that 
you felt made the boat go upwind and downwind the best compromise? Yeah, mostly uh, catering to downwind. Okay. I set up the downwind. And then just pulling everything really hard for upwind. Kind of torches the sail a little bit, but sailmakers like that. <laughs> In Bristol, we're, we're fortunate enough to have a, a fairly active uh, Tuesday night series. We race every Tuesday night, so I, I'm, I'm set up with the with the pull the pull pull cords on the blades, um, and it's uh, just for for quick action. So I don't have to you know grab the handle really when it's working. This one's not working that well now, but um, basically you can just when you when you go to pull up, I just pull right. I can get into the boat handling aspect of it, unless are there, are there any other questions about the, the, the tuning part of it? This is your out home tonight. Um, it's pretty tight uh, upwind generally. In, in lighter air, I'll carry a little bit of a camber, and then and then once I'm on the once I start Cunninghaming and, and I'm on the trapeze, I'll I'll make sure it's board tight again. That tight? Yeah. And, and down, downwind, I've got, I'd say my max camber out is probably only about nine inches off the boom. Um, I think a common mistake is to let it too far out, and particularly wild thinking. You, the boat gets really unbalanced and you can't get in in a groove. It's just way too round. Right. You know, just, you know, you, you look at some, and, and the top twists off because of that, so. Feel it slow, wild, wild thing, or it's really hard to get in the groove. Just, just play with your outhauls. It, it's a little bit of an overlooked uh, downwind adjustment. It's pretty, pretty big. Uh, I'm sort of screwed myself by not having a trap gear on, but you go through a lot of it and maybe jump on another, another boat to, to demonstrate the tacking. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that right away. Very light breeze. Um, uh, up, up wind in, li in light air. I'll pass the, uh, the tiller forward. I've got a pretty short tiller, so I can I can clear it while I'm sitting on the boat. I can clear it and go underneath. This one's this one's probably my tiller's uh, you know, it's, it's like this this uh, this long. So you can, uh, I'm not sure. It's been measured yesterday. But it's, it's quite short, and I have to, you know, I have, I have to really stretch to get it going upwind sometimes. But it allows allows a smooth transition to, to, to bring it forward. Um, but again, I end up, you know, kind of sitting in this area in really light air, coming off the line. And this is like not a not a trapeze position, but um, my uh, I end up hiking quite a bit while other people are going on the wire. And I find that pretty effective for, you know, bigger sailor. You kind of ignore the fact that everyone's getting on the wire. You just sail it, you know, kind of like a laser. And um, you end up hiking and, and easing the sail. And it's a much more consistent way to sail in light air, I think. Um, you know, someone like uh, Pete or PZ can just pop out on the wire pretty easily and get going. And so I just put the blinders on when that happens and, and, and hike out. And that's that's pretty good technique. And then if it gets a little bit windier, I will take the trapeze um, around and hook in, and I'll, I'll trapeze, you know, in this area. So it's, it's pretty awkward. Um, and then if I go full trapeze, and I've got my main sheet forward, my next mission is to step back, and get the main sheet behind the shroud. So that's a real, that, that's a, uh, it's a real hard technique, um, you know, real hard transition zone. It's a, it's a good one to you know, be aware of, and, and if you do it poorly, then the boat, the boat uh, really stops and moves around a lot. So it's, in light air, I've been forced to you know, be real smooth with my boat handling, and um, you know, be pretty uh, methodical with the steps. And so there's a lot of mechanics in light air. Once you'll, once you'll hike in the position, it's the harm you should have. 
Yeah. So, yeah, the, the tiller, I try and keep the tiller. Um, if I know I'm going to trap these, I, I keep it back here. So I'll, I'll steer around. Um, yeah, I have to do that switch before I go out on the wire. Um, He's just trying to be able to keep your high line and not have to go exactly. down. To yeah, because a lot of times you, you end up in the wire for a little bit, you bear off, you crash. You know, and, and this way you can you can actually free the boat up a little bit because I find I'm pulling on the main sheet pretty hard to get the hull up, and then once you get it up, you get on the wire, it just crashes. So actually, you can hike. It's a little counterintuitive. You ease the sheet out, free up the sail, and keep, keep, forward, keep, right? keep going fast. That's sort of a light air, you know, fact guy technique. <laughs> uh, and, um, and, then, and then downwind, I'm basically in the in the same spot. Um, and fluing into, I, I had a lot of a lot of problems learning how to sail, you know, basically without a jib or a spinnaker downwind. Um, and now I can pretty much do it by by feel. But I think one thing um, that that helped me a lot when I started is I put a, a little telltale here and here, and and you can see if the flow is attached. And um, I think I think. Uh, that helps a lot as like a, as a gauge. I don't have it anymore, but it helps a lot. Gas yeah. the overall. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good telltale to have. And it's also good for mass or fish. Yeah. I've been putting one up just just about eight inches higher than the hounds. Okay. In the free air up yeah. top, and then I got one down low too. Yeah. The down low one kind of helps with with what, what direction you should be steering, mm -hmm. and then and I rely on on these telltales quite a bit. You know, so I can kind of stare at, at this one now if I'm getting lost and, and I can find my way. Um, and this boat, in, in light air, I don't, I, I travel up a little bit just to get fast forward. I think a lot of, a common mistake is to let the boat slow down too much in light air. You, you, you kind of want to rip around when you're, you know, if, if you're feeling slow and people are passing you, I think it's better to err on going fast downwind than to uh, go slow and low. So it's nice to go, you know, low and fast as well. But if, if you have, if you're having trouble, just try this, try the, uh, try the speed mode, and um, uh, and then you can slowly, you know, once you once you learn how to sail the boat fast downwind, you can you can start knowing when it's okay, to, you know, okay to bear off and leave that speed. Um, I, I saw that a lot last year. Around, around the weather mark, you kind of go too low and just park. But the boats thrive on going fast and building their apparent wind. Um, so that's, you know, light air is just a lot of concentration and patience and, and minimizing the, you know, the, the sudden movements on the boat. Um, when we get into uh, breezier conditions, I, to get out on the wire, I'll use um, I'll use my main sheet hand, and and I'll I'll do these sort of half wraps, which, which allow me to hold the main sheet, but but have have your hand available, and that's how I use the handle. Goes around the thumb. Um, and then to get out, I uh, I don't use the handle at all. But I'll I basically bring the boat out of attack. I'll get it going um, on the new tack. Pull the main sheet in so the, the hull will actually fly a little bit, and and at the same time I'm using the strap, use the hiking strap to get out as as more of a safety. And a, and blindly I you know grab the hook and I hear for the clip. And then as the boat's coming up, um, you know starting to fly a hull, it's really easy to drop off. It's it's hard to drop off if if you're um, if you're not flying the hull, because a wave will come and knock you off. So I. I'm, pretty methodical about, you know, tacking that way. And uh, it's repeatable, and it, it just took a lot of practice to, you know, hammer that in, so I don't have to think about it anymore. But that's probably the biggest. If you learn how to tack, all of a sudden, if you get a little bit of speed, you can basically race pretty hard. Um, but the tackling's the, the real Did you just speed. walk through going from out on the wire yep. to coming in and tacking and getting back out? Sure, so if we're going out, Pulling the main sheet, the hull flies up, I clip in, and I drop off the side. I trap these pretty low. 
um, and it's it's a it's a it's a hook in and it's a drop off the side, um, and then you and then you're sailing. But to come in, um, I'll just go through a tack. Why don't somebody pull the boom up? Because when you do step, when you drop off with your main sheet, are you are you already trimmed to max? I'm, you let it I'm trimmed in. With, I'm it? trimmed in with like six inches to go. So as you go, you're pulling. Well, I don't. As I as I go, I'm not trying to pull in. I'm just trying to hold a constant. You know, I'm sort of, you know, keeping a constant uh, tension on there as I'm getting out. And once I get out and get sorted, I'll I'll sheet in aggressively. You know, because now I'm on the wire. I need a little bit more power. But I do a lot of the sheeting um, at, as I'm sort of hooking in. There's a lot going on. You know, once I'm on this side, and I'm sheet probably sheeting more than most people would before they go on the wire. But that's after the boat's crashed through the tack, and then I make sure that it's going going the right way. So when I when I describe the tacking style, um, uh, it'll it'll make more sense. Um, so if I'm out on the wire, uh, so I'm hooked in out on the wire. I'll just need to think about it for a second. You don't want that. Yeah. Winter is a bar. I'm trying to decide what I do first. Um, well, I start, uh, I start with, with this half grab, and I'll, and I'll get on the handle. Um, and I won't unhook. It's still hooked. So I'll, I'll start, start making my turn, um, and then when I, when I swing in, um, basically the boat is almost, it's already through the tack when I swing in, so I'm through head to wind when I start swinging in. And I'm trying to keep, again, the main sheet consistent. I'm not trying to ease it or or, uh, or tension it at this point, just trying to keep it um, head to wind. And you're still fully sheeted from pulling the weather. Pretty fully sheeted, yeah. Um, may, maybe you slightly ease just because you're, you're coming in, but, but you don't want to ease too much. It just helps to whip the boat around. So when I come in, at this point, I flick my hand down, and it sheds the sheds the gear. Um, and, and at this point, the boat is already through its tack. I'm going through, and I, I've got a couple different uh, styles, but I think I think I go I think I rotate and go through. I I set the tiller over, and at this point, you can kind of, a lot of times I just let go of the sheet, flick around change my hands and then this is where I'll take a wrap I'll, I'll sheet in get the hull going and um, and, and grab grab the hook and drop out so that's the that's the, uh, the style that I, that I do maybe we can um, we might be able to get a little bit of that on on video we might have it from last year but that, that might help I didn't I didn't bring that sort of technology but if somebody wants to, uh, if we want to do that as a separate mission, you know, I'm happy to do that because it, it, it's a little bit hard to describe. And there are probably some salties that I'm missing. <laughs> there, there's a good shot from the Alamorado Worlds where you're actually on the old weather side and you're not even moving. That hull is out of the water. It's a roll tap. Flying yeah, the new, new hull as you're transitioning coming in. Yeah, that's, that's like White a, said, this is a true roll tap. <laughs> That happens, you know, after a whole year of sailing in, in the, those marginal conditions. Yeah, that's where it, you know, I, we, were, we were laughing, and you know, Glenn and I would laugh at the weather mark because you'd go up one way, I'd go up the other way, and we're like head to head, you know, a couple beats, you know, so it, it you know, then it, it's kind of nice, it just goes back to racing, you know, and he, he won that regatta, not, not due to equipment or anything like that, he just, you know, probably hit a couple shifts a little bit better. You know, that, that's, that's where it, you gotta, you know, think beyond all the technology and lines and crap and go back to the basics and, you know, it's a pretty fun boat. I think one of the most interesting things watching you sail is you're very active on the boat. When we were in Fort Walton, we came around that gate and I was behind you and we shot out across the bay. Yep. I'm just kind of sitting on the boat trapping and you were in, out, in, out, and you just kept pulling away. I mean, you're very, very active, not static on the boat at all. No, it's all, uh, you try to anticipate the next move, particularly when it's, um, 
when it's marginal and it's it's up and down. Yeah. It's it's pretty methodical. You know, you're going through, you know, all the, all the gear changing. Um, you know, coming in at yesterday, it happened coming in. You know, it went from you know full trapeze to none. You know, and and it I was feeling pretty rusty yesterday sailing in, but it, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of practice. And, Am I correct in saying, Lars, that, that obviously you, you sail at a much higher level than, than, uh, than most people, but the technique that you just showed there, regardless of maybe a little bit more or a little bit less mainship tension, the, that's what that, Glenn that, taught us in Bristol, yeah. I don't know, X amount of years ago. So that's probably the thing everyone would practice that. Don't that, expect but, to have to be able to, you know, <laughs> to do it perfectly. Yeah. Still go through that. Well, what, what I like about it, it's, um, you know, it's sort of, well, like Steve taught me in the canoes um, when we were learning how to sail those. You just you get through the you can get through the tack even if it's ugly. You're not head you're not in irons ever. You're not head to wind. You know you get through the tack. It's a little bit ugly on the other side. You know you're scrambling. But even if I let go of the main sheet or the tiller, the tiller sometimes gets stuck underneath here. You know, <laughs> lured and, and you're all messed up. But um, you, you can still recover and you're you're still on that tack. And so I like. You know, even and if it's too windy and you're trying to tack, then then most of the time it'll work. And, uh... well, Lars, talk about um, like yesterday. It was pretty breezy and uh, sailing downwind, wild thing. Just how to drive the boat far. You don't feel like you're surviving, but you feel like you know. It's, you know, I'm talking probably over 14. You know, up to 18 to 20 knots of breeze. And you just want to. I just wanted the, the technique to just send the boat, you know, in terms of weight placement, sheeting, traveler position, and then playing the puffs to always make sure the boat's going fast forward when you're wild thing, because it, it just always seems a struggle, you know, like, like, you know, a lot of times we sail against you and some of us hang with you upwind on the first beat, and then downwind, it's like you're on a different plan, you know, and we're all like, okay, we're back here sailing in our own race, and you're out sailing your own race, and, and Glenn, Glenn and some of the other guys at the 2007 World were kind of in the camp. But just, I know there's a lot of time in the boat doing it, but just sometimes I get so frustrated that it seems like the boat setup seems to be right, but it's just, just something's missing to make the boat click. Yeah, yesterday we had those conditions where it stuck if you, if you were driving hard. So, I, you know, you watch, you watch the puffs and I, I go, um, in and out of um, uh, a couple different modes, and and uh, on the extreme level, when it's when you think you're gonna, you know, you're, you're bleeding away in the pop. Um, and so, uh, just to go through the, you know, if I'm trying to get in and it's way too windy, we had a situation this fall when we were, a couple of us were out and it got got way over the top, and we we're just trying to make it in. Um, and we're stuffing a bunch just by bleeding it. So at some point, you can't bleed it anymore. And then you go back to basically traveler all the way down, <coughs> depower the sail, um, sort of like an upwind setting, not, not as much cutting in. And, and then I go into, if I get too big of a puff, I just I just head up, basically the sail's luffing. And that, you, you sacrifice a lot of depth that way, but you, but you make it home. So when in doubt, you can, you can do that. And, and that's the oh shit setting for, for getting home. Um, and then to backpedal from that, um, you can. Yesterday it wasn't wasn't like that, but it was um, at a point where if you're driving hard and, and you and you hit and you, uh, and you did the waves wrong, then then you'd stop. And so I use the waves a lot to help get the boat downwind and to bleed that power. You know, you try to bleed the unwanted power. Um, you know, boats basically do, the rig's too big for those conditions, so um, that's why I had my rig set up all the way back and, and the rig on pretty hard. Um, so yesterday my traveler <coughs> was more or less in, in that position. I, I'll rarely go all the way down. Um, so you were like like right on the inner shear? Right here, yep. yep. <coughs> Outhaul um, was maybe uh, three inches off the boom. My rotation was, uh, I lock it in somewhere right around here. I don't like it to pulse in those conditions because you stuff, it, 
it gets fuller, and then that's when you flip. So do you mean, when you mean lock it in, just well, ease out limit, it, limit, yeah, limit it, limit it from, from pulsing. So from, from, don't just release it so it can sit. Yeah, down. yeah, I think that's a, lot a, of people that's a common mistake, it, yeah. and, and the rig, you know, when you stuff it, it just gets worse. Yeah. Um, Cunningham, I, I'd ease uh, <coughs> maybe this much from my upwind setting, keep it pretty tight, and, and that and that would allow me to, you know, so I've got a pretty flat sail, and I sheet very, very hard. Um, and, you know, probably, probably sitting, probably sitting here, um, I was trying to hike off the back yesterday, um, and I don't really have a great setup for that. I basically just put my, put one foot here, and I try and lean, lean over as far, as far as I can, and, and just being, I'm not always locked back there, but I use it as a, the bow's going down, I'm driving down a wave, I can, you know, kind of, you know, it's, that's where it gets a little kinetic. You know, you watch the, the new style laser sail, those guys are everywhere downwind, and, I, and I've been trying to be, think about it that way a little bit, you know, they're just bleeding power and finding the easiest, fastest path, and, and I think maybe with the cats, we kind of get locked in too much, and, and so don't, I'd say one tip is to, you know, be active with, with the sheet and the steering pretty active and, and you can find your way. Um, so I'm always looking up in this area um, mm -hmm. for the big growlers. When a big growler would come, I'd, I'd go, uh, you know, I'd try and wild thing in it. If I decide that I'm probably gonna stuff, I'll bleed it down and go flat, ease the sheet, sort, sort of survive that puff. And then as soon as I think the puff is tapering or the first, sometimes the initial blast is the worst, you can get set up you know, let the boat not trip on itself, and then I'll, then I'll just whip it back up again, sheet on hard, and, and get the hull going. So I'll, I'll do that style of, uh, you know, kind of safety sort of, mode. Sort of absorb the hit. Back, back yeah. in, back and in. And then, and then I'll, then I'll also be actively ramp the boat up pretty aggressively so that I'm sailing on the, on the flat of the hull, and that gives you a little more reserve buoyancy. Um, what do you mean on the flat? You surfboard it. Yeah, you surf for it. Oh, you mean on your lure, you're sailing yeah. flat on your lure? Yeah, ball? if you, if you ramp it up high, right. you can, it's a little scary because when it, when it goes wrong, you're, you're, you're done, <laughs> you're <totally> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a good technique in the waves, um, and it allows you to, like, bleed off pretty aggressively, and when your hull's up, you, you've got, you've got a good recovery. You know, when the hulls are down, it, it, it it's a lot of drag to, to, to steer. Does it, um, like, I, I, I know when I sailed that boat, you know, like I think one of the coaching you gave me was keep it hot, keep the hull flying, and, and you see it. But you, when, when you when you go hot and you fly up, it seems like the volume distribution kind of changes on the boat when you yeah, fly up, sure. and the water release comes back. So I, I was trying to watch a video of Glenn sailing downwind to see if he, I, I think he like this boat, he pretty much sails pretty hot with the hull flying for the same reason, because it, it it seems like when you start doing that, the water release comes back. So back and away from what you had yesterday, say to 14 knots of breeze, which is pretty, still pretty powered wild thing downwind. Are you still using the same technique to really fly the hull? And, and uh, I'm not having any problems stuffing in, in 14, well, so I'm, I'm going pretty pretty full power at that point. And, and, and you keep sailing a bit more flat, flatter? I mean, yeah, it, it's you're still flying In, in the waves, I like to really use the height, um, and I'll... Uh, I guess, for instance, Probably Isla, not Mar articulating that right Isla Mirada with that chop, you know, that you get in Isla Mirada, say yeah. 15 knots of breeze, you get a lot of lump and chop, which the tendency would be you want to you really try to fly the hull so you can work the waves more? I think so. Um, but it's not the most efficient way to, to do it. Um, you're you're kind of cheating, you know, cheating the boat to go downwind. Um, ideally, you want to be kind of hiking <laughs> and using the power to go fast forward. So. I'll I'll do more more hiking when it actually is a little bit less uh, less windy when it gets into that 14 or 15 range I'll I'll put the power back in the boat and, and try and hike and use it um, but when you get into that you know what we had yesterday out here um, you're you're trying to shed the power right um, and, but but you're also you see you're you're kind of going you're always there's no one set correct way right. you know it's just like upwind you've got to change through all the modes all the time and, and once you get used to doing the, the adjustments um, you know moving a traveler up and outhaul off a little bit more and cutting him you know you just have to be able to keep sailing the boat along and do all that stuff um, 
and it's worth it to uh, t it's worth it to change the gears. And that's where the that's where you'll you'll find that separation in the fleet. I think is because the people who are used to changing the gears and are good at it, um, you, you you know you don't you just try and uh, try and sail sail around the course as fast as you can all the time. And if you're locked in one mode, you're, you're not going to do that. I think that that hull high off the wind. I've been using that in it because I'm a little lighter. Yeah, it works, but you're you're at the you're at the peak. Oh yeah, you've got to react quick, otherwise yeah. you're flat. Then usually we're reacting when you get to the peak, so you've got to react a little quicker. Yeah, sometimes it's ugly. You know, you, you, you crash a little bit when you're doing that, but um, you know, a couple times uh, you get hooked up and. You've I got don't think the gust the boat doesn't get draggy, and you just right. keep moving in the power. Yeah. So the waves are are um, you use the waves to your advantage. Um, that, that's. Uh, probably one thing, you know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take much, you know, to, to help, you don't need a lot of wave to, to help you lead that power. If I could add something, sure. the boats are going pretty much as fast as they're going to go, and what's holding them back is the waves, yeah. okay, and so really what you're doing is you're playing the accelerator to get through the waves as, qu as quick as you can. Now, of course, I'm pathetic at this, but... Um, <laughs> The uh, you know, there's no sense going. Oh, here's a puff, sheet on, bear away. Here I go, and there's a wall of water in front of you. You have to, you know, it's just an so you have to, you have to pick your way through the waves, and you are passing the waves, so you have to, you know, actively, you know, maneuver through the wave sets, and that's a, that's just a, some people see the way through the waves better than others, and. Uh, and that's uh, that's something that I think downwind sailing is just you go upwind until you can't go upwind anymore, and then you just go downwind. You know. Right, but I mean and, the fun and, is. And, but just doing it repeatedly. The, the, the good news about these boats is it's actually fun to go downwind. Right. It's actually fun to go upwind. <laughs> right. So so there's that. But I I, I I sometimes wonder whether when I'm struggling in those cases, if I set up with more twist in the rig, maybe because my my arms are old or something like that, and I'm having a hard time making that many shifts that that somehow gives me a wider groove to steer around yeah if i if i'm um if i feel like my groove is too narrow um i'll travel her up and mm -hmm. i won't sheet as hard yeah and, and that and that's what i only sheet very hard to um to kind of least stall the sail mm -hmm. so that it's very very board flat and you just you're just driving it's a little erratic but it, mm -hmm. it, it works in that you know like a day like yesterday mm -hmm. get hooked up a couple times now, I've had a lot of trouble with yaw basically when the boards get up too high um, just the boat feeling you know I mean it's nice to have the lured board up boat hikes up it skids out sideways yep. but in terms of keeping it up and in a groove do you uh, is that just a question of being able to I mean I find myself sailing more and more with board down um, to yeah, try and keep it, the boat the going. Boat, uh, boat trips, the, my boat trips if you have the board down okay. all the way. Um, but I'm, I also don't pull them up that far. So I'm only pulling them up like this far. Mm -hmm. You know, my limiter is the is the, the depth of the hull with the line. Mm -hmm. And I've just said I'm going to, and maybe in light, light air, I'll, I'll pull them up so they're, you know, just the tips are in the water. But uh, I think it um, helps me steer with them down. So you, we could just measure how much blade I have down and you can mm -hmm. mark it on your boat, but that's, that's, uh... I have a taper in the tip that makes it so I can't get any higher than that anymore. Yeah, I do too, so it's, yeah. it, it, there's a limit, there's a limit there. Yeah, probably the guy, I think that, uh, you know, probably is, maybe you're equal, maybe you'll say sometimes he's faster than you know, Really he's, isn't he really active with the beans? Yeah, he's, he pumps like it's his job. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I did that one, like, one, like in medium air one time, I was, I was playing around with it. It, it. it does seem like you kind of get this feel, you know, you're in and out working it back and forth. You kind of get this feel for, you know, like when you're trying to keep shooting too tight and stalling the sail. And it kind of works like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but I find uh, it's not, I can't sustain that sort of activity for a whole day. And, uh, <laughs> and it, you know, and it's not, I think, you, some kinetics are okay and they're effective, but um, I, I'm just trying. I need to be smoother than that for, for my body's size. And he, you know, you he, get. He's definitely found, you know, a groove with his body weight and probably most of his personality. You know, and, uh, <laughs> he's just trying to get to the beach, get the next cigarette. <laughs> well, we, you know, he brings him with him. <laughs> Cigarettes and Mountain Dew. I mean, we battle pretty hard on Tuesday nights, and it's. Learned a lot, but that, that's what I've learned about that style. Is it, it'll work sometimes, but say at a world, you can't do that all day long, but even a whole run. You get a little bit lost. It's, it's nice to be able to get in a groove and take a break. Not really take a break, but just let the boat fly. You're ripping along in 15 knots down there, and, and you know, nobody's perfect. And you know, you got a boat next to you, and you're battling, and, and uh, you know, you, maybe you your attention goes away, and you do stuff it. Stuff it in the boat like this. How do you try to recover out of that? What's your technique to recover out of that to get the boat going fast forward? Uh, yeah, it we depends, all on your, depends on your lane. If you're below someone and you do that, they're probably going to roll you. So, well, just imagine somebody's not yeah, there. You okay. just stuff it and you want to go fast. It's a sheet ease, and I, I find when I'm stuffing, I'm, I'm probably dumping the sheet and I'm heading up, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just to like crank that bow shoot, up. Shoot up. Yeah. Um, if you bear off when they're stuffing, you, you're probably going to go over. So that's where I, I go and I go into that. I can adjust to that. <laughs> that's where I go into that. Then you get instantly into that safety mode, you know, of the sails, you know, almost muffing, you know, so if it's a real radical puff, then you're okay. You know, you're not going to just keep cartwheeling. That's what Pete said about the the A2 came out, it was real tough down when he said, said as soon as you feel it, he said, he's out and turn up, yep. he's out, turn up, he's out, turn up. And, that, and then you're you're just, uh, you, you know, shedding it, and then just, just that's where the, the active, you know, the kinder style, like just getting the sheet back in and get going again. But I, I wouldn't be afraid to, to steer a lot, because the boats are, they come a long way, they're, they're, they're pretty nice to steer, compared to say like the Mark IV, which is, you know, it's like, you know, just on rails. It's harder to, harder to maneuver. There's no point that you can go dead down the lane and finish rolling hard on the boat? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, to find dead down wind, but yeah, I, that's, that's what I was describing earlier. But I, I, uh, I don't know, it's more fun to wild thing. Um, yeah, I think there's another technique for getting down wind. I just don't, I don't, you know, I don't. I call it like the Marshall style. We have John Schieffer. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. everything, you just go down wind, but that, it's no fun. I don't like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's no fun getting down there and John being next to you if you worked your ass off going down wind. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sitting there just like, yeah, right. That's what's no fun. You got that smile on his face. Hello, Tracy, stay. how are you? Good to see you again. <laughs> you look very tired. <laughs> At least also, you uh, had the fun of going fast. It's also a lot of work at the bottom end if you're, if you have to bag, right? if you have to bag all your sail out. Everything pull everything in. Park. You know, my, I like to try and minimize the, the difference in the setup from upwind to downwind, right. so I'm not, you know, at the bottom pulling it miles of sheet in. Since you're segueing there, can you talk about coming around the gate? The yep. Position? Yep. So we yeah, can do a weather mark. Yeah. That's where we're at. Weather mark. Let's just uh, let's just assume we've got like a medium wind strength, and we can you can we can back pedal from either technique. Um, coming into the weather mark, I uh, when I know you know I'm kind of basically right there, and I've got a little bit of time. If, if I have time, I'll I'll ease my Cunningham off. Probably you know three numbers. Say it's on hard. Um, and that's that's before I I hit the uh, the reach if there is a reach. Um, so I'll ease that. that that instantly you know one it saves your sail a little bit if you come around the weather mark and your Cunningham's on you know you use the main sheet and the sail just goes mm. stretches so it, it saves your sail. Um, but also lets your mass breathe a little bit. So when you, when when you're wound up going up wind, you know you're you're pulling in the main sheet. You got the diamonds on hard. You got the Cunningham on hard. The mass is bending. So I just like to do that as a first step, um, and and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll 
ride it on that first reach, but let's just take the reach out of the out of the equation. And, you know, normally we don't have that set up. Um, so I'll come around, uh, and it's mostly all sheet and uh, and and, um, and steering at that point. Um, come in, come off the wire, and and continue to to kind of ride the boat sitting here. Um, I will. Uh, do you tighten the barrel line before you come in off the wire, depending on the condition? I'll do it as I'm as I'm bearing off. I'll 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 do the bear away on the wire, and then when it, when the boat doesn't need me anymore, I'll, I'll come in, but I'll, I'll still try and keep the hull up in an ideal it's world. Get, yeah. And then when I come in, yeah, it's easier to get in. When I come in, I'll, I'll blow the rotation. Um, and if, if it's really, and then, I, and, it, and then I'll blow the, the traveler down. And those are, that gets you like 90% there. Rotation traveler, then hold the board. Yeah, but if it's really windy, I won't bother with the rotation. Um, I'll just, uh, you have to, to bear off, you have to do the traveler first. So it's sort of a, those two are interchangeable for me. Um, are you still out on the wire when you're rounding no. the weather mark? When uh, do you come in off the wire in relation to the weather mark? So you just said when? Uh, I don't, uh, the mark is just a thing you got to go around. So I don't, uh, I don't have a set formula. I just like to ride the boat as fast, you know, it, the boat tells me when I, when I want to come in off the wire. Um, it's a, just like to keep it going fast the whole time. And it's a little different for each condition. So I don't, they don't come off right at right when you're rounding the mark. You know, you, you, you want to ride it down a little bit. When you start pulling the boat back, basically, as you're heading down. Well, when I when, I, the boat start to when you do the initial head down, the you know, boat will sail like that for a little bit, and then I'll be coming in to, to keep the hull flying, and then I'll I'll try and put the power in the boat to to keep that same direction. So I'll pick a line. I'll, I'll try and power the boat up so it, it goes to that direction, um, or can stay going on that on that path. You know, there's, there's some tactics involved on what you want to do with certain boats around, but um, I like to I like to just be as smooth as possible and keep the boat ripping fast. You know, I, I think a lot of times people get to the mark and they're like, oh, I got to set up for downwind, just plop, yeah, yeah, plop everything down. But it's you, you gain a lot of it, there's a lot to be gained in the corners and keeping them clean and going fast. It's really a whole segment. Of, of, of the race course, um, so I, yeah, you know, I've blown the rotation, um, the traveler is down, and say like, you know, that then I'll then I'll do like another gross adjustment with my body, you know, come from the wire to here, then I'm, then I'm in where I can reach everything. I'll probably go for more Cunningham at that point, um, and I'm still adjusting my main sheet, and then I'll I'll go for uh, usually a lured board pull that up and then I can sail and then if, if uh, there's no one around I'll go for the weather board at some point um, and then I'll sort of get into um, you know constantly adjusting the, the travel or the main sheet and, and, and the outhaul um, going downwind. The outhaul is kind of set it forget it but if it, if it gets if, if it's puffy like yesterday I'll play the outhaul a little bit and put my put my foot up there and pull it. Mark, I saw you um, in the real wide air uh, doing the wild thing, and nobody seemed to be able to do the wild thing. And as best I could tell, you slid to your back and had your knees up in the air and your feet were on the back. Yeah, it sucks. I know, it's hard to steer. I can't see where you're going. I have to go to the chiropractor now because of this technique, but it, it, uh, <laughs> for my neck. But basically, in my in the worst position of, of wild thing, it's, it's foot on the lower board. Um, I think I've got maybe a strap here or both feet, and then uh, um, I'm basically as far to lure it as I can, and that's when I'm sheeting off the boom here, um, and uh, I can't really look around too much. Um, that's, you know, you can kind of look behind, but that's... And what is the traveler at that point? Uh, I'd say more at this hiking strap, okay. and then if I, if I feel that the traveler is pretty important um, to fast forward speed. So if I find myself, you know, from from that position all the way max to leeward, it gets a little windier, and I get a puff. And I'll I'll let the boat bear off in the puff ease, and it, if it's if it's still too much for that setting, I'll I'll just basically move my body up, and then that takes care of it. And then as it gets windier, I drop the traveler down, 
and, the, and by dropping the traveler down, that get, gets you that low mode. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't, I don't like to. I find I, I stall too much, or um, if I, if I bring it, bring the traveler more than this to weather. And, and when you're doing like obviously the lighter stuff, you're doing slightly hotter angles. Is there, is there a point where you, where you let out too much um, rotation? You know how sometimes it gets. Kind of yeah, the sail, like uh, in that in that specific condition that Bob is talking about, and, and I've got my feet on the on the uh, lowered side. Sometimes I need to pull the rotation back a little bit um, to just pop, activate the top of the sail because okay. it'll it'll fold on itself, particularly when you're sheeting pretty hard. Yeah, you know it's almost too rotated, and, <coughs> and you, you, you know you, you get the, the tip of the sail is activated by you know this part of the mass. So you pull it back slightly, and it gets stiffer, and you can sheet harder. So that's, um, yeah, you want to slightly bring it back. What are you looking for weight placement for and after? You're looking for a certain amount of hull depression in the pub? Um, about oh, four and a half. Yeah. I, I, I'm sailing as far forward as I can and, and uh, you know, dropping the bow down in and, and just keeping the, the transit down. Yeah. Um, because the, I think the fastest boats have the, have the margin on their hands on the My, for my weight, there's a lot of there's good buoyancy in, in that particular boat, sort of right in the middle of it. So I, I try and be pretty far forward. So going back, going back to the weather mark. Yep. If it's if it's solid, you know, depowered coming around the weather mark. You know, it seems that if you let out enough sheet to smoothly carve around that weather mark, then you've got way too much sheet out for your final downwind run and you end up trying to let the traveler down and pull the sheet in at the same time and that's kind of a time when I seem to stall out yeah, and the bug stops moving. that's where if you come in, you know, you, you come in, you hit, you, you've eased the sheet, you've done your initial bear away, yeah. you come in and it's a, it's a definitely a panic, you just want to like drop the traveler right, and, and clean it and then, then the you're okay down. and you don't have to ease that sheet. But I guess what I'm getting back is, does anybody try to ease more traveler as they carve around the weather mark rather than sheet, so you don't end up with that cell all billowed out and then I have don't, to... I don't try, it's not a smooth adjustment on the traveler. Okay. It's, it's, when I crash here, I just, you know, undo it, slam it, and then and then you start sailing again, and then okay. it, it, when you're doing all these adjustments, so you, I don't do them all at once. It probably takes right. 200 yards to do it all. Well, that's how I was trying to eliminate that pulling the sheet that. back in it's and almost, the traveler down. It's almost scary the amount of main sheet you still have in. Right. And, and if, if your cleat doesn't work, then you probably flip at that point. But, um, but that's that's what I would try, it, is um, having more main sheet on than, you, than you're comfortable with. And then the yeah, traveler it. right away. Well, I'm talking, that's what I'm, yeah, yeah when, you're, when it's light more, enough, that's yeah. easy. But yeah. when it's, it's, it's not blowing so hard, you're, on the edge of control, but a good solid wind. It seems like it'd be ideal not to dump so much traveler yep. out and carve around and just ease your traveler yeah, down and carve so, around. As soon as you do that traveler, you can you can sheet back on and, and just keep sailing. Right. You know, so you may have a little hiccup there, but it, it's yeah, it's well, still, it's, me still it's a big hiccup. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to minimize the big, yeah. yeah. So you see that a lot, and that that's where someone coming behind you, right? You're easy picking. So you know, you're all messed yeah. up. It's like yeah, you know, and it takes a long time to recover. And, like get into that, right? You know, it's like it's like NASCAR. Yeah, it's like falling flushed. in a hole. You got to crawl out. Yeah. Of it. yeah. In that process, you just went through. When, when did you do your out hole? Um, that would be uh, pretty late. Oh, last thing to get yeah. Well, it's it, it's 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 power. So it's um the, the board pull is is the last thing. Um, sometimes in really heavy air, I'll pull my boards up first because uh, I don't really even need any power. Um, the outhaul, why would I do that? It, it might be after the, uh, you know, you go Cunningham and then outhaul. So when you're coming into the top mark, and you're, you're pretty settled, you're coming in, you use a little outhaul before you make it, I'm down all before you make it. Yeah, before I, before I even start, before, the, start breaking before I get to the mark, <coughs> yeah. I'll, I'll use the downhaul. Um, even if it's cracking? Yep. 
the sale. And it's mostly just to save the sale. But it also helps. Usually you go out. But you can't always do it. Um, you're overlapped. And I, I try and try and make a point, even though you, you might sacrifice a little if you're overlapped with somebody for a little bit. But um, it helps on the on the tail end of the whole park routing. You know, um, most of the time it pays. But that's what I that's what I figure to do that. Not to go off on a rabbit hole, but if you heard with Sasha and Bob Bear again. No. They come around and they're playing, leaving the main lock, playing the trap. We're coming around the mark and on the trap, going down the middle. Where, where we're going, shit, what we do to survive, they're so, staying on the line. Rock hall. <laughs> the trap, trap going downwind. They, they did, but apparently now Sasha's got it with the curved boards on the marshman. He's got it worked out where it's stable enough and he can pull it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so like basically launching a kite. Yeah. So there's another gear in the breeze now down. I don't, I don't know if you've covered this in Mountain Wars, but in, in conditions where it's definitely a wild thing but not full on and you jibe, how long does it take you? I know before you were saying don't be in too big a hurry to get right back in the wild thing, kind of let the bit wind itself up. That's in light air. In, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, so. In breeze? Yeah, I, I'm not talking about, you know, setting on the rear beam breeze, you know, worrying about stuffing it. It's basically, uh, you know, I try and, um, if I'm not in a heated battle with somebody, um, I'll, I'll do everything pretty early. So that it's, uh, and, and if, it, if, I, if I know I'm going to do two jibes into the, into the gate, then I'll, I'll do one of the boards, uh, the boards with them. Um, but my first, uh, First, uh, first sequence would be getting the outhaul out of the way. It's kind of a pain in the neck to do. Um, particularly, it's really hard to do once you start rounding up. So I like to do it. Uh, you know, that's probably my first control. And then if it's windy enough, um, I'll, I'll pull. Uh, uh, I don't really. A lot of times I just round. You know, if I am in a in a heated battle, I'll, I'll round. And um, both my rotation and cunning hammer let let outboard, so I can I can basically round the mark and then pull those on. But uh, I like to preset the rotation slightly so I can you know so I can sail the boat pretty well. I don't worry about the cunning ham. Um, I can't really get that full on until I'm sheeted in a little bit going up with anyway. Just pull some slack out of it maybe. Yeah, I'll pull, maybe put put, put a little bit on, um, but. A lot of times on Tuesday night, you just round with the basics, you know, out all and blades down, and, and then um, you get sorted out, just try to hold your position. On the bigger course, you can, it's nice, it's nice when it's windy to come out a little more, you know, depowered enough that you can, you can uh, come out of there flying. If it's real breezy, what do you do with a rotation? Okay. What you um, If it's real breezy, yeah. I mean, we're in top limit. <laughs> Are you pulling rotation in before you start the rounding? Let them tell them both. If I can reach it, you know, it's up here. I'm usually back, way back. Um, I guess ideally, you know, if it's really windy, I'll, I'll uh, set the boat dead that wind for a little bit, to get, to get sorted, and then, and there, you know, doing it on a wave. In Santa Cruz, I was doing that a lot. You just pick a wave unload the boat for a little bit, you're still, you're going dead towards the mark, and, uh, you know, on that sort of final wave approach, you're, you're doing everything, so when you're around, you know, it's, in, it's important, when it's flat water, you can get everything pretty easily once you get going up wind, but when it's wavy, you, you've got to have it set up, because you'll get knocked off the boat, you know, if your boat's not set up, you know, and again, I'll probably pull my last bit of Cunningham on, you know, at, once I'm going up wind, but everything else I try and preset. If it's hairy. When, when, when it's hairy on the weather, what do you do with your rotation? Um, the rotation is, uh, depends a little bit on, definitely depends a lot on your, on your sail, but um, I think yesterday 
my, my max setting is probably somewhere around in here. Which is the outside of the transom? What does that point at, Mars? Points. Uh, somewhere down in here. What? Okay. That, that's about it. And that says... You, you probably traveled out a little bit then? You're pointing yep. at the shear, Bob? Is that pointing at the yeah, shear? It's, it's, it's more at the transom of the boat. It's at the pedal. Yeah, that's, that's, the that's, where, the that's where Ashby says his max aft is he's pointing at the fluid pedal. Right, okay. That's about right where this mark is. Is that that fluid pedal? I get, a, I get a it close forward. and then I... I'll play it a little bit, but I, you know, I don't, I don't set it to a certain mark. I don't have marks. I, I, I look at the sail, and and you know, yesterday I, I had it wrong for a little bit. It was, it was uh, one way or the other. It just wasn't set up right, and I used it maybe two inches, and so the boat just took off. Um, so it's, it's pretty. Uh, that's after all the Cunningham was on, the main sheet's on, and and I had sailed for a pretty long time. definitely pull it back too far and the sail actually gets really cold. Yeah. Um, so I, I usually pull it back too far and just ease it until I feel the boat you know, jump into Bring the new gear. But that's, when I'm doing that adjustment, I'm, I'm sheeted on as hard as I can. You know, I'm sailing, I'm sailing the boat really aggressively at that point and just, you know, I get it in my hand and I, and I, and I do it so I, so I feel the, uh, you know, I get the feedback. The helm almost unloads and goes new. Yeah, and the boat just goes, you know, you're able to get back into just just a little bit of sheet action. The boat can sail that way. How much um, travel or down? Uh, I was doing um, probably two, two car widths yesterday. Um, that, that's probably max. Like six inches? Right about there. Two, two car widths. I don't know what that is. That's about like four inches. You know, center line, so that's all. Yeah. When you went out yesterday afternoon for your second shot, where was the traveler at that point? When? Uh, upwind? Yeah, uh, center. Just, just okay. end, yeah. That's not on Marsh. Right, you know that. Uh, In our okay. typical Florida, which is 710, where do you have your rotator at? For max power. Well, uh, if I'm sitting on the hull, it's. Uh, I point, point it around the, the aft edge of the center board truck. As soon as I get on the wire, you got to pull it back um, to, uh, um, to basically step it off the rig and it'll bend too much. So it's probably there, and then and then when I get on the wire, I'll pull it back just a little bit to, to, you know, to use this, this section of the mast. So, yeah, so you can, you can sheep more. Um, but it's pretty circular um, when you know, typical in Florida, you, know, you say seven to ten. That's a pretty big range. <laughs> you know, so you're you're in seven knots. You're you're probably getting on the wire. In ten knots, you're probably getting close to uh, full deep power. So, um, boat's pretty unique in that it, it's pretty powered up. So you've got to shed that power. Um, uh, and, but if it's going from seven to ten, then you're changing those gears the whole time going up. Okay, if you feel you're getting overpowered, do you Cunningham first, or do you pull the rotator? Uh, both. Same time, basically. You have Cunningham or, or rotation. Um, uh, you, but you do, them, you do them together. It's not a singular. You, you wouldn't do one or the other. You do them both. If you had the winery, you might have guessed that. Uh, probably not. Um, I think it gets slightly, uh, if I had that, I would use it for downwind. So, yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with that one because it, then you're just, you get too many variables to, to, to do it repeatedly. I just don't, I don't see a, a spot in my routine to throw that in. Um, you know, there's enough controls with uh, the tiller main sheet, and then, and then you've got to, might if it would if it dropped from you know twenty down to five. Yeah. But uh, um, sort of run you know run what I have <laughs> for the race. Well just mechanically speaking for the smoothest lured rounding, uh, barring any traffic or anything, uh, in in 
wind that you're going to be full powered on the trap after you go around the weather mark. How do you find getting in your mainsail? Are you pulling the traveler up and easing the sheet down and then just coming all sheet once you as you're rounding up or, or I've got the main sheet in pretty tight. So um, you're going leaving the traveler down and that's what I'm saying is what are you pulling in first as you're getting ready to start rounding around that lured mark? Or traveler. Traveler. Make sure it's pinned. And it, Okay. Um, so it's all sheep as you're coming around at that point. Yep. And if it's windy, I'll, I'll try and again find that moment where I can you know, take my time and set my traveler up for upwind. Right. And I, I can I can do it when I'm sailing upwind, but it's a little bit awkward. Yeah. It, it, traveler is an awkward it's, it's adjustment worth, on this It's side. worth it to, to adjust it, but you, you need to have the space. You, know, yeah. you can't be right next to You can to usually somebody. pull it in, but you can't ease it. Yeah, I, I can ease it, yeah. um, but it, it uh, you've got to have a really a really positive setup. Yeah, I like George Saunders. So you like got to have a real clean. You can't have a plastic clean. Okay, got to get rid of this. That's an answer. First gun. My uh, travel, well, look, it's, it's pretty robust for this for that reason. This is kind of hanging around, so I can. I guess I steer and sheet with one hand, and I, and I'll, I'll get it to the point where, where I can, where I can use it. But so yesterday I was, I was going from, from here, mm -hmm. and that's, that's sort of my standard traveler down position. When it's about 15. Whenever I've run out of options, right, um, with my deep power, I don't want to get that. Right. Or, or I'll use it if it's um, if I'm not quite if I'm not quite uh, you know wound onto my diamonds enough, or or um, or I'm not quite you know all the way depowered with all my settings. I'll just use it as a default. You mm -hmm. know, because it releases the boat and you're able to sort of go fast forward. So it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, and a lot of times I'll use it. You know, I'll stay in that powered up range because at the weather mark it's lighter or something like that. And I'll, I'll just, just a quick adjustment. All of a sudden the boat just rounds up. You know, and you can go to the point pretty high. But it's uh, I, I've started to use use it a lot more than the before. So, you know, it's it, instead of playing your your diamonds, uh, you can adjust this. What about um, you have to have it? There, you might as well use it. Yeah. When you start getting into the um, you know higher wind ranges, um, I know Jay has said maybe it's just on this boat, but probably on all of them. If you, he, he finds the boat unloads if you pull the boards up maybe 46 inches. Do you, do you find that works? Or not? Uh, uh, Andrew and I tried a lot of that um, before the worlds in Amorado. We did a lot of that. Yeah, we did. That's when we find fine tune the traveler. Um, settings and we did try the boards up but I found that I, um, the main sheet just hits it and then I would bruise myself on it when I tack so mm -hmm. I, the traveler kind of does the same thing but maybe for someone who's lighter it, it is valid to pull them up. Um, yeah if anything you, you don't want to like move them back that's my feeling um, it just seemed awkward when it wasn't uh, full on and I had the traveler down and the blades up. I, you know, I end up like with the main sheet wrapped around the top of the thing. It was just too messy for me. <laughs> Maybe they're too long, I don't know. But, um, you know, Steve's got a, a well in his, so he can. Watch you on. Yeah, watch box. Beer holder. I actually think it's a big well. But I think that, you know, if, if you wanted to play that game, that's what that's what that's a setup. You know, and um, but this boat's it's not set up that way. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Before we uh, before we leave, why don't uh, Bob? You've got a regatta coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. If you want to talk about it a little bit? Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that I noticed is that 
people are having a hard time you know, stopping. It's a pretty powerful tool on the, on the line to be able to just stop and, and control your code in one spot. Yeah. Um, you know, Oliver, you're trying to do some stuff, but you, you, know, you had the right moves, but you just were just going fast the whole time. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it really pays to be able to you know, maneuver like a tank. Um, what, what is the, um, what, yeah. what, how do you do that? I guess uh, is if, if you're you know you're you're let's say you're you know you're you're early let you know but you're not over the line you just want to hold your position. What's the best technique to do that? I mean, as far as I mean, traveler down, just I mean, just stop. Yeah, I mean a combination of of, of uh, traveler mostly down, and then and then you're and then you get that in a spot, say uh, you know inner shear, maybe a little bit further up, and then it's, it's main sheet and and, and rudder move. And, and so you want to practice going forward a little and then like backing out into it again. You know, and then when you get closer to the start, you, you want to be, um, you know, say at 15 seconds, you want, to be, you want to be backing into that broad reach position and taking off. So that, that's what I do a lot of is, is, is this stuff. You actually go um, backwards or just stop the boat? Yeah, sometimes you go backwards a little to, to you know, it, it, it's it a rotates. Pretty, pretty useful tool. Yeah, you're, you're, ro you're rotating, but you're actually going backwards a little bit. Uh, At what line. point do you hit the cunning heat? Uh, part, I know part of that is it's kind of off a little bit, so you're not... Yeah, I keep it off uh, so that so that you have control. If you have it on, then, then you can't control the boat. Mm -hmm. It's just like here, you know, if you had your cunning heat on. When I'm on my, yeah. when I've decided that yeah. I've got the distance that I want to, to go full speed, you then yeah, I always think the 15 seconds is as I have the zone where you want to be thinking about going forward. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just going slowly forward, at least you're starting right. the process because it, it takes probably about 10 seconds to actually get on the wire, pull the main sheet, and, and pull, you know, pull the cutting edge. Okay. You can time that, you can time yourself, you know, it's mm -hmm. probably different for each person, but you can do that by yourself, you to to start the watch, and then once you get up to speed, you're fully cranking, see how long it's taking you to do that, gotcha. and it's a pretty good tool for learning mm -hmm. yourself, really. Okay. Um, but that's... I think Gordy's got a question. Yeah, that's that's yeah, something, I yeah. Question. Lars. I got off. a question. Sure. <laughs> Does it have anything to do with weight? Because I, I try to stop the boat, and no matter what I do, it still seems to creep forward, even almost to the point of where I'm getting an automatic tag. <laughs> I, I don't, I wouldn't think at that point, wait. Mm -hmm. you know. your, your mass rake, I mean, if your mass rake forward, it's always going to be pushing the bowels down, you're going to be fighting, trying to stop the boat. It's, Maybe that's it. What, you know, one thing that I've found, you know, if you're out just sailing around and practicing, you know, maybe a lobster pot or something, I, just go I, up and I, try I and just try, try to hang, I hang, try. hang, and as long as you can, and uh, it's good, you know. Play around with your mass rack, you know, if you rake your mass rack, just one, one, bu one maybe bolt. Maybe that's it. I'm pretty far forward. I think it, it's, it's just, I think it's a basic. I don't think any, anything really, it, it's just main sheet and tiller, really. I don't think a weight or <coughs> harder the smaller your rudders are. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <coughs> because, you know, I mean, because that's that's the other I mean yeah. you get this you know, I mean it's one of the places where having big big clunky rudders help you stay attached but with the skinny boards and the skinny rudders you just are you that's just, why, you know, the the Melvin rudders have that big curve in yeah. the back so you can actually control yeah. yourself with the line. Right. But just you know, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, you, you give up some of that when you decide to go with, you know, the skinny high aspect ratio yeah. stuff. And you it's just not have really to, worth you it. Have to, you have I don't to, think it's worth it. It's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's yeah. a, yeah, it, it, 
it, it, it, it just is as, as people are sit there and make adjustments, you know, to say, okay, we're going to go with deep, you know, deep skinny foils and or maybe, I don't know what, how, what the uh, curve boards do, you know, at down speed situations, but that whole down speed case is one where blade area um, and your ability to sort of start and not sag in a hole and all things like that are all compromises that aren't really naval architecture compromises. You're not going to find that in the CFD and analysis, you know, that, that yeah, I'll, that, I'll never right? start above uh, an old school Marstrom because, because one, if the person knows what they're doing, they'll, they can skunk you. If they don't know what they're doing, they'll go ahead and win and, and skunk you that way. But that, that's, at the Worlds, I never, ever set up to weather one of those boats because the center boards are that big. Right, and, and just, they just they, don't go they sideways. Can, they can just go straight up wind, basically, at slow speed. Right. So. But it's and, something, something and, and to they, think. Yeah, they don't go sideways. Something but, to think about. Is, I mean, I, <laughs> but I for sure identified that. As, right. you know, <laughs> don't go there. No, <laughs> no. Uh, you know, don't I, ask you how you know. Uh, and that's, I, I, I don't start that sort of keeping in the box way because you know I've got skinny blades. And, yeah. All these, these are different, but I mean, you know, when I've had the long. Oh, it's time really hard at a crowded starting line. Yeah, to, to manage, to that, manage that hole. That. Yep. So, so in a big fleet, you know, we all get used to these little fleets. It's getting better. Thirty boats is better. Uh, when we go to North America, it's a whole different deal. And there's fifty boats on the line, and yep. you can't get a line, uh, land sight. What do you do? You just stay bow out on the guy next to you, or pretty much, yeah. Two people at that point, <laughs> and you just you just, just don't fall behind anybody. And they're over. Well. Um, I, I rarely use a line sight, um, but uh, I guess one thing I do do is I, you know, I, as you're in a starting sequence, is a, I'll force myself to do approaches all the time, you know, and, and just, you know, if you're in postponement, and just keep keep up that mm -hmm. that repetitive yeah. nature and, and uh, testing the, the wind and, and the breeze. And, uh, that's something I learned in, uh, you know, in college sailing is, we just never stopped um, trying to start, you know. So we we're always in sequence, you know. Even if, you know, even if the race bay was adjusting things, and it got to a point where you could intuitively know where the breeze is better, and, right. and you know, in you know, a place like uh, you know Charles River or something like that, if you kind of knew, had a good feeling of what was going to happen, you could make a mad dash to that pin. And a lot of times, you know, I see it in the A class too. Is People aren't aware of what's going on. It's like, oh shit, we're in sequence. Oh, it's three, three fifty. It's light air. I can't even get to the pin. Right. It's so favored. You want to start there, but you know, you just you look back and half the fleet can't even get there at the time because it's light air. <laughs> they're, they're in bad air, and they can't they can't physically get there. So um, you need to, you know, be in the starting area and just doing the loops. And that's that, that's how. It, I've thought about it, and I don't always do it, but um, it's good practice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you you wanna <coughs> you know in in that maneuvering, if you're I I know when someone's getting a jump on me, and, and then I gotta worry about it instantly. And then I'll go into a different mode, like gates and height, and so I can. Uh, but usually I try and you know you try and jump the person below you, because then. Flush them, then you've got this one quote hole. Right. Um, I don't usually try and flush the person above me until later on. Um, you know, don't work on that. Don't go for the height right away. Mm -hmm. Just get out of the blocks because you can sail for, you know, say one minute. Then anyone who's had to tack or or uh, is getting bad air is basically they're 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 done. Right. You know, for the most part. So it gets you into like the top. Know, tear in the fleet if you can just sail off the line because that's pretty, pretty important. We didn't talk yeah. about this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's all it's all some down speed control which you can practice on your own. It's, not, it's oh, kind okay. of boring but it's, it's kind of fun when you get into it. It helps with landing. It helps, yeah. <laughs> it helps with everything. You don't mess up your boat as much. <laughs> I mean, we're forced to learn it you know for where we sail because you have to go to this skinny little ramp and ride right. right. and kind of be in control. Yeah, I know. I've been here. Yeah, I ain't screwed up all the time. But, uh, 
I, I know I mentioned to Ferrar at the uh, at the top mark. I saw a lot of boats, you know, still dumping the main um, pretty aggressively. What do you do if you don't have a cleat? Do you just not clean it? Yeah, just hold it. Hold on it, yeah. lasso, and then just yep. have enough throw that you can get to your traveler with your main sheet hand. Uh, or, or are you taking your, or you, is your? No, the, yeah, the main sheet hand is, main. is for the traveler for yeah. sure. Yeah, and that's where that half wrap. As long as, as long as you don't spool it out, you know, even if it's half ass in, it's better than spooling it out. Bad. Those are the only notes I took. <laughs> one, <laughs> one thing I noticed when I was out there, I, I actually tried, because I, I, my first boat I had a flip flop on the boom and then I went to the tram sheeting. And, yep. and I, I've always been tram sheeting, same sort of thing, like, you know, all the good guys have it here, that's how I'm going to have it. And I never really knew the difference, but today I tried it off the boom and then re threaded it through the tram, so I had it set up in both. And the one thing that I really noticed was that when I had it off the boom, it's a double movement to come in and unhook. So you kind of come in and your and your hand is naturally in this position. Whereas when it was on the trampoline, it's as you're coming in, you can actually do that, and it was a huge difference. Like I, when I f did my first tack like that, I was all chicken winged up, and I was trying not to let the main sheet off and trying to unhook. And it was only a matter of a couple of inches, but it was such a yeah. such a notable difference. So yeah, I got it off. Yeah, you might, it might not work there without, you might need a cleat there. Right. I don't use a cleat on top of it. Okay. Well, how do you do it? Oh, we saw some of your moves today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have a, the main sheet of Dylan in the same hand. Watch out. Yeah. I usually have the main sheet of Dylan in the same hand coming in. I think Oliver won the day with moves and, and, and races. I think it was over early half the time. Yeah, though. you're. Uh, I couldn't What's control that age that. difference? <laughs> Bob, you won the yeah. swimming. I, I couldn't. That's the one thing I learned. Mean, it's like, <laughs> and obviously, I didn't get out there. Like, I didn't. I didn't. Everyone did. was using the practice races and holding back and like doing the races. But as soon as it was like a race start, everyone was like, yeah, shooting on early. And I needed a. Uh, I didn't have a bullhorn. Yeah. So I wasn't going to lose my voice. Yeah. Um, it's like quandary. You get up there and everybody gets a little anxious and everybody gets a little tight on the line. And there's no room to pull the trigger. You know, you're, you know, you're I thought it was five still seconds to go and you don't have room to, you know, ten seconds to go, you don't have room to bow down and sheet in and go because everybody's crowded up to the line. And you'll get one guy that's maybe a boat length and a half back from the line and finds an angle and he's out on the wire sheeted in and he'll shoot through that primary so line. I think those starting sequences, it's all about practice because the group is never the same. Sometimes right. you've got room to right. go bow forward, sometimes you don't, and it's all timing within that. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I managed to get a good start each time, but it was a couple of times it was from back, because people were early, but a couple of times it was actually holding my lane. And, right. and I think that's... Yeah, yeah I thought, I thought being challenging. over early was, you know, I, couldn't, I didn't have much control over that today, but it was still valid uh, practice. Yeah, and even though people are over early, it allowed you to practice all that stuff. Yeah. Um, any other? Uh, I, I didn't really have a great chance to look at any sales or anything today. Um, we want to. We need to. That's a concentrated effort. We want to try and do any of that here. Well, the biggest thing I was thinking about was to sort of you know how to you know, how to get to the line at full speed. You know what. The, you know, it's actually, you know, you, you, you're talking about, you know, 10 seconds to get the, get yourself out on the trapeze and everything else. But if you start at 10 seconds to, to go full ramp, you need five or six boat lengths yeah. or more. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge amount of the line that you just run out of. That's what well, I'm talking I, about. There's yeah. people that are crowded. Well, but, 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 I'm, I mean, ta just, I'm just, talking the 10 yeah. seconds from, from when you're starting to bear away, and, and, and that, that's... That's the yeah. ten, ten seconds. So not not full boat length sailing. It's yeah. it's more, you know. I'll sit there and and, and sit on the line, and then when I want to go, it, it's probably taking me half of that time just to rotate the boat 
Mm -hmm. And it's that rotation that messes everybody up. Yeah. If you're not rotated and you start, yeah, well, I, I you always try. And, I, and I always try. Slow. I always try and have the boat rotated before, you know, so that it's yeah. So, you know, so but so it, but if it you know if it's a real starting line and it's yeah. really tight, you don't have that luxury of. of there was a lot um, of people fat, like if it was serious racing, it, like there was a lot of like um, you know bad down you know right in front. <laughs> yeah, try it. Yeah. <laughs> try it. But I think if try going to Europeans with eight bo eighty boats, it's like yeah. you, you you learn how to be scrappy pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. And there's no mercy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so if you're if if you're on the line in front of the guy, it's, he's just bad of luck. Yeah, basically. I mean, because yeah. because you know, you're good at blocking. Yeah. There's no there's no way he can you you know he, he starts yelling at you and you just well okay I have time and opportunity you know. You have to give me time and opportunity to get out of the way. Okay. Oh, gee, that doesn't work so well. I mean, it, you know, you, 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 you don't, they don't tell you that you've got to absolutely. You no. can't. You can't use the rules, though. You have to. You have to box. I, I, I know, because, but, but, but you can't have a negotiation with somebody. Yeah, then you're it, both like, <laughs> you know. No, 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 no. But, yeah. but, but, but what, what I mean to say is, is, is you're on the starting line. You own the real estate. Yeah. He yaks at you. You go, and, and or or don't. Because it just doesn't matter. You know, you you, you own the part of the the part of the yeah. world that you're both in. One way to get better at all this is to set up on the line at two minutes and yeah. sit there and just yeah. protect your you know fight for it. And see Mitch if you can, style. Yeah, I mean that's you know sit it, there for five minutes. It's ingrained in the tornado fleet. You know, we used to have these ten minute starts, and if you weren't on the line at five minutes yeah. battling, there's no room. Yeah. You know, see, so you had to do this stuff for like five minutes and. and Sometimes you didn't without a paddle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and you like back in the gym, and you know, and but, you know, it was, it was, you know, the crew is, you know, you're both driving the boat, and but that's where, you know, the the tank driving really, um, mm -hmm. it's boring as hell to practice, but it it's it's actually kind of cool once you get into it. You know, people look at you funny when you just go out and sit yeah. there and do all this stuff, but it's <laughs> come by you. Yeah. Right? But it, it really really helps uh, getting off the line. Uh, something you can do totally on your own. Um, just makes it more satisfying, I think, to sail the boat when you're more or less in control. Man, I saw a couple, a couple people today were getting, you know, you see the white eyes, and they're right next to the aqua sport. And I was like, should we move them? Like, no, oh, let's, let's see figure it out, you know. But you gotta, you have to, you have to not hit motorboats, you know, on the starting line. You know? <laughs> it's uh. Just a control, a down speed control is, is uh, something that you don't really think about in these boats. But it's pretty, pretty important to work. That that top mark grounding, what you were talking about, I mean, you know, I in that once it gets to that sort of pressure in the last few races, would you normally stay on the wire as during the bear away and stuff like that? It's just uh, I I tend to um, I tend to get off the wire as soon as I can because it means. You're ultimately getting to uh, to the wild thing faster. Um, you can cowboy it um, around if you've got a big pack of people that are, you know, slow or and something. And you want to take that high line to try and. Keep yeah, but you're really you're really committed to going to that corner at that point. Yeah. Um, or the other style I've done is that you can, you can cowboy it and then you come in off the wire and you jibe. So in the middle of your jibe, you're frantically, you know, powering up. Um, which that, that's a kind of a cool tactical move because you know a lot of times today people would round in the pack and if if anyone had you know rarely did anyone kind of do that mark rounding where you, you can cowboy go fast jibe and then and then power out then you probably end up passing that whole pack which ended up sort of deep into that corner kind of light you know want jibing I want uh, yeah I saw you do that I went from like half a second. Right, <laughs> just because you're you're out by yourself. Right. Well, this, the, the biggest the, the biggest bummer I always have is, is you, you jive, you go from going pretty fast wild, and you jive, and it just it's the hardest part is, is just sort of getting it back up again. Yeah. Because it it, it 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 isn't you can't sit there and wait for it because it's because you got a line of boats coming at you. Right. I mean, particularly on this one where you've got a fairly short board, and and if you're me, people are going lower and faster. So you've got to basically try and get, okay, i got to, as soon as I can, jive. And then it's like, do I head right back up so I'm freaking near aimed you gotta, at him? you got to snap it. 
and and and, 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 and then you do the and, you know. and, and, and it's just and you sit there go, I'm, I'm giving away all this room yeah. and and you know I know it's gonna get there but just trying to get the boat to re-accelerate it seems to be harder to do the the harder it's blowing it's like the boat doesn't really turn the rest you know in, in more moderate air you throw the helm down you can sort of get the boat to carve all the way around the jive in heavy air it just doesn't seem to quite get back up to to the to the angle or the the sail doesn't attach the flow doesn't attach i sort of you know i i whip it so hard that you're almost capsizing in the jive and then and then when you come out you kind of land sometimes i land laser style you know like oh shit you know and then, <laughs> and then you you dump the main sheet but then you got to pull it back in again and, mm -hmm. and that's where maybe the, the, well, ki the kinetics really help there a and, big and, ease and, on and, the main sheet to up too. yeah and you're just and and so you just you know it's like jiving an asymmetrical shoe you just rip it through mm -hmm. and, and then try and get the sail you know, to hook up right away and, and so it's sort of it's somewhat violent but you mm -hmm. but you uh but when you get smoother at it, 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 um, it does work. Mm -hmm. I found too, so if you pop the traveler off mid jive so it goes all the way out, and then as you come out of the jive, it's all the way out, and you sheet it back in the flow so it's up, and you don't have to front climb as that. Yeah, I just don't, I don't have a, I guess I don't have to think about that issue. Do I do? Or you stay in the middle of the tramp and right. breeze, and it, and it flies mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Any other uh, comments on today? Questions? Is the breeze going to start dying like this fast? And My register? Huh? So it's time to register. Let's go.